Thank you, Professor Popovsky. Uh, may I now call upon Dr. Galina Sokolova, Associate Professor in the School of Liberal Arts and Humanities. Hello, everyone. It's a great honor to be with you tonight because I have been part of the uh, JGU adventure only for the last couple of years. Uh, I have been teaching at uh, the Liberal Arts School and uh, I will tell you about my own story and uh, how it came to be. Uh, in my case, JGU came to me in the shape of two professors who came to my home university for a guest lecture. And, um, well, at that time, I, I knew India. I knew about India. I had been coming to India for many years, ever since my, uh, my research for my PhD thesis. Then for a year, I uh, was a fellow at uh, Banaras Hindu University. And I had had lectures here and there. So the idea of coming one day to teach in India, uh, I was playing in it for for a while, but then somehow seem, things never seemed quite right, because a university is not just any kind of working place. Uh, you have to feel a, a belonging to it. So these two professors came, and uh, beyond the content of the lecture that day, and in the way they were walking and talking and interacting with each other, uh, it induced in me, well, <laughs> I will not say a, an epiphany, but an intuition about the culture they came from, uh, the culture that I could see uh, in transparency behind them. And uh, so I had this intuition about perhaps that culture would be I would be willing to be part of it. And somehow, two years later, that happened. And it happened in a very natural way, at least for me. And two more years later, I feel even more at home here uh, because of you, because I came to know you and to appreciate you, the JGU community. Um, and. Um, well, I cannot say that JGU is perfect, but then life is not perfect, in, in particular when it grows, when it grows. And that is something I will never cease to be amazed at, the opportunity of being part in one of the small wonders of the human adventure. Huh? The, the possibility to be part of a university in the making. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Galina. We are immensely fortunate to have with us here today two of our distinguished institutional mentors, Professor Dr. Mahendra Pal Singh and Professor Dr. Rupendra Bakshi. May I now request Professor Dr. Mahendra Pal Singh, former Vice Chancellor, National University of Juridical Sciences, Kolkata, former Dean, Faculty of Law, University of Delhi, to kindly share a few of his thoughts with us. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Madam Bharadwaj and Shri Bharadwaj, my colleagues, some students, including Rajkumar <laughs> and Pratibha, <coughs> and all present in the hall. Uh, it's a great honor uh, to be here on the 10th Foundation Day of Global Jindal Law School, which has been doing so well 
so far and is expected to do better than what it has done so far. <clears throat> uh, the uh, batch at Delhi University where we, we taught Rajkumar and his colleagues, 94 to 97, was a special ba uh, batch in which some excellent, brilliant students and equally mischievous ones were also there. I, I happened to be the dean at that time, and therefore uh, I had to face both. Uh, fortunately, the ones who were really brilliant, Rajkumar was one of them, they did very well. And it is <clears throat> to him and to one of his another colleague uh, that I mentioned the idea that as we were going to retire soon from Delhi University, whether we could think in terms of creating some kind of institution which would be basically uh, controlled, established and controlled by academics with the support of the society. That idea actually looked nice. Uh, Rajkumar, whom, about whom uh, the other colleagues said that if you mention to Rajkumar, he will immediately execute it. And this is how, when I mentioned to Rajkumar, Rajkumar said, sir, this is excellent. He was already teaching at Hong Kong at that time, doing very well as an associate professor, and every possibility of becoming a professor also very soon. But he decided uh, to take up that idea. And it is in that process that we started by uh, creating a society, education society called Lears. And it is under that society that the conference was held uh, with the support of, of course, uh, <clears throat> Sudarshan, as he has already mentioned, from UNDP. And uh, it is uh, Shri Bharadwaj who actually, as president of that conference, inaugurated that conference and made uh, remarks for the success of the organization that we had uh, started. But then very soon we realized that unless there are funds, and if we have to create an academic institution, not only funds, but even a law would also be required. And therefore, there is need to have support somewhere from uh, the government also in that regard. And it is in that process that Rajkumar, with his uh, imaginative capacities and hard work, visiting uh, Delhi, almost every weekend uh, from Hong Kong, coming to Delhi and uh, discussing these uh, things, uh, became certain that unless there are enough funds to start an institution, it will not be possible. And it is uh, Shri Bharadwaj who gave the idea uh, to him that uh, he should meet uh, uh, Naveen Jindal and see whether he would agree to this idea. And I think Bharadwaj uh, sir himself may have spoken to Jindal. Uh, consequently, as the remarkable capacity of convincing people Rajkumar has, he convinced in the first meeting itself, uh, Naveen Jindal, uh, to open an academic institution, particularly as a law school. And very soon, therefore, the process uh, started. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, some of us, of course, could join him. But uh, I could not join him because I was given the responsibility at another uh, institution after retiring from here. And uh, before I finish that, another institution, and after that, another institution, 
but uh, Rajkumar actually continued to ask me whenever I am free, I must be available to join uh, the Global Gender Law School. And it is actually now that that moment, of course, had not come fully, but he created that moment that now is the time that we should return to this institution. And uh, uh, I consider at this uh, mature age when we are, uh, I'm not sure how much I can contribute to the law school, that uh, by way of Guru Dakshana, he has asked me and he has offered a position to be here uh, in the law school, but uh, let us see that we are able to do our uh, best and uh, hope that uh, the eminence which this uh, university had acquired during these uh, 10 years, that eminence will continue to increase day by day and within no time we will find the university being counted among the maybe first 100 or 50 universities, best universities of the world. With that hope, I uh, 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 thank you all for giving me this opportunity to be present and to, be, uh, to listen to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> persons who now visibly turn old as the function nears its end, and friends. Uh, Bazarin said it all, but it didn't go up to, he stopped at J. He should have gone up to Z. I wonder if you begin the reverse way, how would you characterize the word Z with regard to JGU? <laughs> Zest is one thing. It occurred to us, but there were other candidates. So we might do another on the 20th anniversary. We might begin with Z or Z and then come to A. But it was very nice indeed. In fact, some of you may not know, and Vaseline certainly does not know, that Saudi Naidu was a member, one of the 15 women members of the Constituent Assembly of India. And the first day when uh, there was greetings to be exchanged to Rajendra Prasad, there was a man called Satyendra Narayan Sinha, who was the deputy speaker, pro term, and he said, This day is reserved for doing worship of this great man. And everybody spoke about Rajendra Prasad, but Saraji Nairu, Nairu took the cake. He, she said, say the poet. So she said, if I had oceans as my ink, and firmament as my parchment, and eternity to write the ocean to this man, even then the words will not be exhausted. There is a difference between, I always say that psychophancy and constitutionalism were born on the same day in the Indian Constitutional Assembly. Psychomancy is not a great thing when it comes to institutional memory. I think we need to develop a critical institutional memory, and that's how institutions grow and survive and grow. And therefore, I think it's very important that Brazil ended, where he ended, namely with joy. It's a festival of joy, it's a festival of memory. And a young person, very early on, said he would wish to do a 20th and 30th and 100th anniversary. I would be stately, I assure you, out of your harm's way very soon. But I think the idea of looking back, looking towards the future and looking back into the past is what institutional memory is all about. I won't take much of your time. 
This is not what I intended to say, but personally inspired me to say this. I want to say a couple of things very quickly. Um, I have been, Bhutti gave me a toy correspondence with him with regard to my institutional email, which was necessary to get myself a remote access to the university library e-resources. But Bhutti insisted that I should have an email account with JGU first in order that I can uh, then become a member of the remote library. So I complied. And I'm astonished to see the number of emails per day, large links we can get. <laughs> and I say to myself, you've been deleting them, which is the offense of 20 years in the US law. To delete anything from your computer is an offense for 20 years in the US. I hope nobody listens to me here. Uh, as is the normal tendency. Uh, I think uh, it is, um, it is a thriving and a throbbing community. The great community, JGU, where everybody writes in. I had um, <coughs> Matthew John had lost his car key. And I had a flood of emails on his losing the car keys and how he found it. And I said, what to do? I just can't delete the emails. There are so many per day. <laughs> and that is a complete and total dedication to the institution that you all have, and I compliment you on that. Uh, uh, modifying um, what Sri Vishwanath wrote some time ago about Narasimha Rao. And Narasimha Rao was the Prime Minister of India who introduced globalization to India. And Sri Vishwanath wrote, I think, in EQW, a column in which he said, all the customary things that readers of Shiv are accustomed to reading about, about the great prime minister. But at the end he said, every time an Indian citizen orders a Domino's pizza and devours it, he or she ingests a little bit of Narasimha Rao in him. Because the pizza was introduced as an aspect of globalization in India. And I would say similarly, Every time an institution of eminence is recognized in India, it's a little bit of Raj in it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is similar to what does we are with this globalization that Raj has done for globalization of legal education. I won't agree with the Excellency, Dr. Bhardwaj, that there was no legal education prior to him. In fact, Raj himself received legal education from Delhi University. We are proud of the fact. So there was like some kind of legal education. What Raj has done is, of course, very remarkable and may continue with vigor and strength in this direction. Uh, this is uh, uh, obviously high praise, but it's very well deserved. I congratulate you all. I want to say the primary strength of this institution are its students. And I often come here address students, young people, and I've gone back rethinking my own positions a number of times. And that's a great achievement in such a short time of this university, to attract perhaps the most gifted mind to the law and other schools. And I compliment the school for producing a community of co-learners and citizens. Faculty, the less said, the better. I learned and unlearned so much in constant interaction with them. And I mean, first of all, I must mention the misguided enthusiasm with which a recent issue of General Global Law Review was edited by Oshik Sarkar, Libon Erzata, and Adi Rustan Khan on the, on, uh, for me, the celebrating the minor literature, minor jurisprudence of Pope and Bakshi. Apart from that, I learned a great deal from it. Apart from that, I've interacted with many colleagues. I have mentioned a few of them, very few of them. Among them would be Juma Sen, whose project on writing international feminist, uh, uh, feminist judgments, how feminists write judgment at the international movement. 
and she's pursuing it. Deepika Jain and her colleague, which, which, which I one seminar which I attended on, uh, on abortion. And we, discuss, we discussed ways and means of holding hands with American sisters in the Trump Raj. So Navin Jindal Raj extended to Trump Raj in ironical mode, but it did extend. Uh, Deepika Jain had this seminar and it's a very, very, very valuable work. With Mani Shekhar Singh, I had a lot of discussions on law and art, but particularly on law and cricket on which he ran a course, and that was, I think, a fantastic idea. International lawyers are not very common animals in the zoo of law schools. But I must here say that you're lucky, all of you are very lucky, that you people like Govinda, Vaseline, Dr. Muthi, um, Prabhakar, Prabhakar, I think, same, and many others, whom I would not name. We are only very lucky to have Stephen Marx from no less than Harvard. Are you still at Harvard, Steve? Yeah, Harvard is still lucky. And also at Jindal. I, write, I remember writing him a cheeky email, I forgive me, when he introduced himself as advisor to the vice chancellor. I said, who can ever advise this man? <laughs> <laughs> She can advise all of us, but who can advise him? But I wish you luck in your assignment if you're still pursuing that impossible dream. Uh, and so on. I, I met many people. I met Warwick in Dindal Law School. Samina is here. Samina Dalva had done a marvelous book, a journal, and then later on a book, I think, on, on Barbary Masjid in India. 25 years in what? People, alternate accounts emerge from Bombay and other places of that entire catastrophic episode. And um, Matthew John, I mentioned. So in a sense, Sivarshana and Sudarshan uh, tried to seduce me. They came to my home one day with Raj, of course, to quote-unquote join me in the law faculty. And I said, I already joined it. In fact, I'm a minor founder with Raj, but nevertheless, they said I should join it, and they, they gloriously failed to persuade me then, but I mean, since it is alleged in the website, when I have seen that I have been persuaded against my will and without my consent. That's the very thing, but to remember, I'm a very proud member of JU. Now, let me now end by saying four short lines that I've composed for you in English and they're very short, brief sentences. The first is, learn to rest. And there is a song by that name. Learn to rest, but never to stop. And I say, and never to stoop, even in pursuit of excellence and global rankings. Thank you. programs, the university would promote their personal and professional growth as well, a commitment to research as the foundation of a successful university, and also a commitment to international collaboration. It's through deep and sustained partnerships that we can offer our students opportunities for international learning, and that we can bring multiple perspectives and the best research expertise from around the world to bear on shared challenges. 
JDU has been extraordinarily active in establishing such relationships with leading universities around the world. And that, I think, is both a reason for and also a measure of the university's success. And what tremendous success, you know, as that film just demonstrated, to visit the campus now is to see that early vision realized and in such an incredibly short period of time. And it's not just insiders who recognize the achievements of JGU. The entry of the school into the world rankings that we just saw demonstrates a much wider range of visibility. Indiana University is truly honored to have played a small part in contributing to the development of this community. Now, in the one minute I think that I have remaining, um, this is a happy coincidence, I think, um, that we can celebrate two anniversaries at once. Um, and I would like to invite Vice Chancellor Kumar, please, to the stage, along with my colleagues, Austin Parrish, Dean of the Law School, and Jay Krishnan, my colleague at the Law School. Um, and as they come, I will, I will explain. So uh, it is Indiana University's 200th um, anniversary this year. And <laughs> And, uh, and we are, so in, in celebration of our bicentennial, um, one thing that we are doing is awarding bicentennial medals um, to some of our closest friends and colleagues and supporters. So I would like to ask Dean Parrish to present this um, certificate to Vice Chancellor Kumar which is in recognition of distinguished and distinctive service in support of the mission of Indiana University. And I would ask Professor Krishnan um, to award the Bicentennial Medal itself. May I now request Professor Austin L. Parrish, Dean and James H. Rudy, Professor of Law, Indiana University Morrow School of Law, to kindly grace us with few words. Thank you very much. On behalf of Indiana University's Bloomington Mauer School of Law, uh, on behalf of the faculty, we extend our congratulations on 10 years of just extreme excellence. Uh, and also to thank you for 10 years of friendship and trust. One of the things that's unique about the relationship that JBU and Indiana University has is the depth of the international partnerships. Many universities and many law schools claim uh, to have international collaboration, uh, but they're more just paper agreements. I wanted to give you just a sense of the depth of what uh, JBU has done in the last few years. Um, they have hosted, or you have hosted, over a third of our tenured faculty with distinguished lectures uh, and guest speakers. Um, the very first pub publication of the law school was a joint collaboration uh, between the Global Law School and our law school and our Center on the Global Legal Profession. Our Center on the Global Legal Profession, one of the few of its kind in the United States, was launched here uh, 10 years ago uh, at Jindal. Uh, and in fact, that center is also celebrating its 10th year anniversary. Uh, we have a Stuart Fellows program that sends students around the world. It's one of the very few of its kind in the United States. Uh, over the last uh, 10 years, more than 200 students have been sent around the world. We're very grateful that 73 of those have been hosted here uh, at Jindal. Uh, the number of joint conferences, the number of joint degree students, the number of joint research publications have been significant. And for all that, we are incredibly grateful. On behalf of the law school, uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor Kumar. Thank you. Hello, friends. I'll be brief. I have three 
points, and I'll try and do them in two minutes. Uh, the first is that no one with a chance to speak today can pass the opportunity to congratulate all of you, uh, and especially your amazing Vice Chancellor, Siraj Kumar, on the success of these 10 years. Like others, I could go into this at length, but let me do executive summary here. Awesome. Second, both as a dean, a leader in US education, but also representing my institution, uh, we learn on an ongoing basis from what Jindal Global University uh, has done. All universities, whether they are 200 years old, 135 years old, 800 years old, or 10 years old, face amazing challenges right now. We have a wonderful and active partnership uh, with KGU, but part of that partnership is just watching and learning and talking with people here and seeing how fundamental change takes place. And that leads me to my third point, which is I don't care how old an institution is, we live at a time of profound change, driven by technology, changes in society, threats to democracy, to our understanding of government and governance, to labor and work. Any university that is not agile and thinking about these changes and embracing them and training people across disciplines for the 50 and 60 year careers and longer they will have is missing the moment and will not be a great university in 10 years. What JGU has shown with its leadership and its community, with its students and its larger network is a brilliance and an agility, an awareness of society, not just for Indian higher education, but for education the world around. Congratulations. May I now invite Dr. Paul Flagger, fellow, Mansell College and former Director of International Affairs, University of Oxford, to share his reflections with us. Thank you very much. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be able to add my special greetings and congratulations um, on behalf of all your many supporters, your friends, your collaborators from the University of Oxford. And I can speak with some authority because I was technically Foreign Secretary for Oxford for six years. So I know um, what counts as uh, real friendship and real quality. Um, now, you have, um, through your um, I've been actually coming here now for 10 years, and I've actually watched the small intellectual seeds and acorns being planted here. And as I come back this time, I actually literally see them grown into blossoming plants. Uh, mighty oak trees, eight departments, which you could call out your eight uh, oak trees, and you've got this wonderful, striking, shining uh, green campus, as we've heard. So, it's, it's just a wonderful thrill. Now, it also strikes me that what you've achieved here is to capture and imbibe the spirit of Oxford. And of course it's been done because you have many uh, colleagues who can bring, literally bring that spirit alive, uh, Vice Chancellor Raj Kumar, Sudarshan, and many other colleagues who can actually bring it uh, literally. And it's also been nurtured by the many uh, academics, lecturers, and researchers that you've invited. And, and, and also, I would say it's been reinforced by these wonderful summer and winter schools, and I've been personally involved in these, where your students have actually come to Oxford and uh, taken part in discussion and debate. And you know, we're a very disputational university, and I think that spirit has been, has been captured. And you saw that actually in Kabir. Kabir was one of my students, uh, a wonderful uh, winter school we had, and I think he spoke uh, uh, superbly. So what is this spirit that I've been talking about? You've heard many of the ingredients with these wonderful talks, interdisciplinarity, ambition, quality, engagement, standards. I want to just pick out a particular critical TLC, okay? So T, critical thinking, leadership for L, and collegiality for C, this involvement of all the faculty in a, in a kind of 
transparent, inclusive form of governance. Okay, that's the end of the formal bit. But Raj has actually introduced three magical secret ingredients. Number one, he's introduced this tradition of scarves. So this, this is a very special Oxford trick to give scarves and make you feel really at home and involved. And number two, and I noticed this with the uh, blooming of the bushes and the hedges, you seem to be trying to create little quads everywhere. So I think the quad, quad framing is coming uh, quite fast. And number three, and this is probably the most important element of a really top university, and that's food. Now we are an eating university at Oxford, it's our magic ingredient. We do all our real business over meals. And I must say the food here has been splendid, and Raj himself hosts, and Gudmunter and others host these wonderful dinners where we actually become friends and do a, a lot of business. Now many of you know that I have a tendency to get lost. And many of the buildings here are quite similar. So one other little magic ingredient you might adopt is to give actual names to some of the buildings, rather like college names. You could think of your heroes, many of them sitting here, and give them names. It might help us uh, stop getting lost. I once famously got lost and tried to break into a senior faculty's bedroom at 3 a.m. thinking it was mine. Um, so, uh, you know, help me not to do that again, I promise. Um, so, look, it took Oxford centuries to build up its global brand. And I'm going to share with you something very private, in confidence. We're actually pretty worried. We're very worried. Because in 10 years, look at how well you've built your brand up. You leave me and my colleagues very worried. Congratulations. May I now invite the last speaker of this segment, our very own Professor Dr. Stephen P. Marx, uh, Professor of Health and, Pub and Human Rights, Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, Harvard University. Uh, good afternoon. I was present at the creation, and of course, if I were invited to speak in my personal capacity, I think the alphabet that Besselin launched us on wouldn't be long enough. I could even start from Z and work my way back and have too many things to say. We'd be here all night. But I'm on the program because of the uh, second segment of the program dealing with university partners, and Harvard University is a partner. Obviously, Raj didn't need me to become a partner with Harvard University. He's a graduate of Harvard University, and you saw David Wilkins in the film uh, extend uh, his warm greetings. But my role here is to reaffirm Harvard's support for this partnership and to congratulate you on the University Day and the 10th anniversary. I cannot resist uh, following in Tom's footsteps and uh, telling you a little anecdote that represents one of the features of C. Raj Kumar. Of course, he had many contacts at Harvard University, including with me, and I've been involved from the beginning. But we didn't have an MOU or a formal understanding. And in the spring of 2015, he said, Steve, we've got to create a summer school. We've got summer schools at Oxford. We've got summer schools all over, all over the world. We need one with Harvard. This was 2015. I said, you know, Raj, we could do that. We could work really fast and maybe uh, do it in 2016 or 2017. He said, no, no, Steve, no. 2015, we want to do it now. <laughs> and so in typical C. Raj Kumar fashion, this first summer school at Harvard University uh, was organized uh, within a, a matter of months, not as, as big an undertaking as the creation of this university in less than a year. But we managed to pull it off, and that was uh, the first session of it. We've now had four sessions. We're preparing the fifth session. And I must tell you, that experience of having 35 students from Opie Jindal Global University participating in a three-week-long summer school at Harvard University is one of the most enjoyable experiences that I've had for the other faculty who have participated in it and for our university that is very pleased. So I can speak, I think, with a great deal of assurance on behalf of the university because the vice provost for international relations 
um, <clears throat> Mark Elliott, was the keynote speaker at the uh, closing banquet of our last summer school and made very eloquent statements regarding the pleasure that Harvard University has for this, uh, long, this collaboration. And uh, we therefore, I think I can speak on behalf of all of Harvard University, of my own school, of the other schools with which uh, Raj has established good relationships, when I say we do wish you a wonderful university day and a wonderful 10 years of celebrating the wonderful achievements of this university. And Harvard University looks forward to marching with you for the next uh, 10 years and well beyond. Thank you. Dr. Jayant Krishnan, Milt and Judy Siebert Professor of Law, Director Milt and Judy Siebert Center on the Global Legal Profession, Indiana University. May I invite him on stage? Well, let me just begin by saying how grateful I am to be here today to commemorate the 10th anniversary of VOC Jindal Global University. As someone who's been closely watching what has transpired with OP Jindal Global University over the past several years, I have to say that what has been done here is nothing short of pathbreaking. I think it's really important for us to keep in mind how truly historic uh, this university is. I remember vividly uh, 13 years ago talking to Raj Kumar about his dream for creating a world-class higher education institution. I remember hearing his aspirations, his vision, and his ambition and thinking to myself, there's no way this can work. Uh, but I didn't know Raj all that well at the time, so I just decided to remain quiet and to offer my hope in whatever uh, ways I could assist. And I'm so happy that I decided not to speak up and express that initial concern that I had. And I say that because in reflecting on all that has been accomplished to date, it's absolutely, I think, remarkable. Uh, to begin, the generosity of Mr. Naveen Jindal places him among some of the greatest educational philanthropists the world has ever known. And I think that's important to remember uh, that Mr. Jindal's gift was made to memorialize his late father. And there are historical, and I think interesting, uh, precedents along these same lines. For example, uh, uh, I think about those other family-based donations made over the years, such as Leland Stanford, who in the late 19th century, after tragically losing his only child, at the young age of 15, decided to build Stanford University as a way of creating a legacy for his lost son. Or about how recently Bill Gates gave the University of Washington School of Law a multi-million dollar gift as a means of honoring his father, William Gates Sr. Or about Washington Duke, an Amer American Southerner during the 1800s who eventually came to oppose slavery and believed in providing women with access to education how this individual founded Trinity College that later became known as Duke University as a result of his son, James Duke, wanting to create a lasting tribute for his father. Or how my uh, provost at Indiana University, Lauren Robel, was able to secure a gift from the well-known businessman, Mr. Michael Mauer, which was meant to serve as a family-based legacy. And so what Mr. Jindal has done, along with the amazing efforts of the faculty, staff, and students, is really remarkable. And of course, the everyday leader, Raj Kumar, is someone I want to particularly highlight here. Uh, his efforts have been nothing short of astounding. And as I was thinking about what to say regarding Raj, I was reminded of a speech I heard some years back uh, given by the hugely successful Vietnamese-American uh, businessman, Viet uh, Ingo. According to Ingo, in order for an institution to thrive, it needs to have, among other things, a strong CEO, a strong COO, and a strong CIO. Now, of course, this statement may not seem all that novel of a concept, but for Mr. Ingo, CEO doesn't simply stand for Chief Executive Officer, nor does COO mean Chief Operating Officer. And there's more to being a CIO than that of being a Chief Information Officer. Instead, these titles accompany much more um, that I think all perfectly apply to Raj. Specifically, I think it's fair to say that JGU's CEO is Raj, uh, which uh, Mr. Ingo defines as the Chief Energy Excitement Officer. Uh, never before have I seen someone who has such passion and love for an idea uh, than I have with Raj. In addition, Raj has been JGU's COO, and what is meant here is that he's been the school's Chief Outreach Officer. 
I mean, look around this room. There are people from every corner of the globe, all here to celebrate and be part of this individual's dream. And finally, Raj has been JGU's chief imagination officer. It's CIO, if you will. I mean, really, uh, only one with such amazing imagination and sense of creativity could have turned what was only a distant vision into actual reality. And this has all been done in just 10 years. And for me, a major lesson in why this institution building has been so successful is because of the character, dedication, and integrity of all of those involved. Of course, there are many people who have been able to make this institution come alive and build it up from the ground up. And when I was first here, there was little more than a few walls, a few classes, and uh, just a handful of staff, faculty, and students. But there was hope. Now, there was a dream, and there was a vision, and, all I can, and I can say in all honesty that seeing all of this come to life uh, in just a short uh, period of time fills me with inspiration. So congratulations, Raj. Congratulations to JP. We now have two video messages on behalf of the members of our governing body. The messages are from Ms. Jane uh, Shukowski, former director, United States India Education Foundation, and Dr. Francis Julian, senior advocate, Supreme Court of India, and chief legal advisor, JGU. Principal director, General Institute of Behavioral Sciences, and advisor to the vice chancellor, JGU, Professor Dr. Sanjeev P. Sahani. Good evening, everyone. I'm the last three-minute speaker. Then Professor Raj and Mr. Bhargaj will come. It's a great privilege to work in this university and a great honor to work with Professor Raj Kumar. So my colleagues sitting with me, they were saying that I was looking pretty young when they were showing photographs. So I said, thanks to Raj and JGU, now I'm pretty, looking pretty old. Everybody talked about Raj, Raj, Raj. I know after Naveen Jinder, we should say one person. That is his wife, Pratibha. Pratibha has given a lot of freedom to him. I know that he, even when he is at home, he reaches late at home, he's still on the phone. And I know uh, he, he doesn't take rest. He does not want other people to take rest also. Whether, you know, many times it happened that, you know, we are having a dinner, and I will try that if I will not take his call, but then he will keep on calling, keep on calling, 20 times my wife will say, better you take it. So, I would personally would like, unfortunately, I don't know if she's not here, but I would personally would like to thank Pratibha because, you know, she has given her so much permission, approvals, that he is total free for this JGU, and he's wedded with this JGU, I must say that. I want to go back to 2007. Very few people are aware of that story. I got a call from Mr. Jindal and he said there is a young gentleman has just visited me and he wanted to establish a university. And he said, that is not our business. So Dr. Sarni, you offer him a cup of tea and he's also carrying a book which I will send it to you. You read it out and educate me. And you know, when a chairman of the company is calling you and asking you to read the book. It was 400 pages. And I thought, why these people come, you know? Anyway, and while I was thinking only, this gentleman was in front of me. I'm Rajkumar. And, uh, okay, and then according to the Mr. Jindal's version, that, you know, say goodbye to him in a very polite way. And I did that. But I said, typically, we will work on it. And the biggest mistake I have done <laughs> of my life, giving him my mobile number. 
who reached back to, I think you were working in Japan at that time, or at Hong Kong also. But he was in Japan. On an average, I'm not lying, swear upon God. I used to get 30 to 40 calls every day from him. And my son was probably two years old. He was not able to pronounce his own name. But whenever the phone rings, he says, like my uncle. <laughs> And I virtually got fed up of this man. And Mr. Jindal uh, was delivering a talk somewhere and he said, you must come with me. And then at the end of the function, I said, sir, please save me. He said, what happened? I said, the gentleman by the name of Rajkumar is bothering me so much. And he said, ha, 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 ha. I said, what happened? He said, oh, he's calling to you also. He's calling me. <laughs> He said, so morning 6 o'clock till 11 o'clock, I keep on getting calls from him. Then when my day was, he was in trouble then. So I said, what should we do? Then he said, think about it. And what is your opinion? I just wanted to get rid of him. I said, sir, let's start the university. <laughs> and then he said, are you sure? I said, yes. So he said, okay, tell me. Now see the another thing, what happened. And that was the first call I made to him. After seven months, I said, Professor Rajkumar, I met Mr. Jindal and he said, we are okay with the idea and we'll go through it. That's it. Just 14 hours later, he was standing outside the office of the Jindal saying, I'm here to establish the university. <laughs> and then again, Mr. Jindal called me and he said, he's, he's here. Did you call him? I said, no, sir, I did not call him. Then he said, what to do? So I said, okay, sir, doesn't matter. We, the process of Haryana government is not that easy. So, you know, he will be tired and we'll go back. But he happened to know so very well Mr. Echad Bhatwa. And Mr. Naveen Jindal respects a lot for Mr. Bhatwa. And Mr. Bhatwa is an authority. He can you know, call anyone in India, from top to the bottom, anyone. And he helped us while calling to the chief minister. And I virtually know what kind of a language he used, you know, which I cannot share it with you. But then he said, you have to do this good work. At least do a good work for yourself. And, you know, after, and when we said, you hire the architect and everyone, you know, within 16 to 17 days, this man came with a complete detailed feasibility report. Mr. Jan was the chartered accountant and he prepared that, I still remember. And now we thought that we have to be a little serious dealing with him. Believe me, the other name of Professor Rajkumar is persuasiveness. If he wants something, he will say, I want it right now and we have to deliver it. So that is the, the story that how we started. Then the second thing, uh, which I, I was committing a mistake in a way, that when we got the legislation then, we had a very long meeting that whether we should start on the 30th September 2009 or we should postpone to 2010. And I typically, I said, no, 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 it was a barren land. No way we can start in 2009, we'll start in 2010. He said, no, it has to be started. This entire academic block, those who are new, I want to tell you, faculty housing and the student housing was cons constructed in five and a half months. The credit goes to him. Because he used to manage everything himself, even to the movement of the trucks, which are getting cement and steel, and even the drivers were very unhappy, but they said that, sir, Please don't give our number to him. Because he said, where are you now? <laughs> where have you reached? And if somebody stopped the trucks at the tall toll gates, and then he will call the commissioner of the size commissioner, why you are holding it? We need it immediately. That was the story with that kind of a commitment and dedication he has established. I'm an organization behavior person. We read a lot of theories about leadership. You know, leadership, transactional, transformational, servant. 
I want to do my last work. Uh, Shriram said that he has written three books, four books in the last eight years. Shriram, I have also written five books in five years by Springer and Bloomsbury. But I want to write the last book, The Leadership Style of Rajkumar. And probably that will be the best quality. Thank you very much. May I now request our founding vice chancellor, our CIO, CEO, and COO, Professor Dr. C. Rajkumar, to kindly deliver his address. It's been a very long evening, and uh, a lot has been said, and I have obviously speechless uh, to be said about our journeys, our evolution, our struggles, our aspirations, our achievements, our milestones. I just want to say that um, this is a very extraordinary moment for me personally, but also to feel that this journey was possible because of this collective energy and consciousness that this room has seen, but many rooms in this campus, but also many people, both here and outside, who have brought to bear their vision, their own imaginations, and their own struggles, and their own aspirations. So, in some ways, institution building is a part of a collective effort where everybody is involved, and most of the time, the person who leads it ends up getting the credit. So, I want to really dedicate all those things that have been said about me to all of you because each one of you have contributed in this extraordinary journey to help us achieve what we have set out to achieve and to reach where we are today. So once again, I really want to congratulate each one of you who are present here. We have one more speech left, so I'm going to speak exactly for one minute and you can trust me on that. I want to thank our honorable former governor of Karnataka and Kerala, former law minister, Mr. H.R. Bharadwaj, and his distinguished wife, Mrs. Bharadwaj. For all of you who are familiar with Delhi, this university was conceived in number 14, Tuklak Road, where Mr. Bharadwaj was living as law minister. I met him for the first time during 11, 12th, and 13th of August 2006. And on 14th of August 2006, I visited the house in 14th of Cliff Road, and that led us into an extraordinary journey where many, many actors were present and so many individuals were involved. And Mr. Bharadwaj remained the pivotal around which everything happened, and his wife was deeply committed to this vision from day one, led us into an extraordinary effort that made this university possible. So I want to thank you, sir, for your inspiration and for your extraordinary vision. Thank you, Auntie, for your vision. You have indeed transformed so many lives who have been here and who will be here for the future. Of course, I want to thank uh, Naveen Jindal, our founding chancellor and benefactor, his wife, Shalu Jindal, and his entire family. He, in particular, for his vision, his commitment, his dedication, and his ability to keep his word under extremely difficult circumstances. If you remember 2009, the economic situation was not, was looming. Uh, there were struggles around the world. And at, that was at a time when there were very good reasons why he could have been reluctant, but he wasn't. And during all these years, he has simply stood like a rock and supported us in each of our endeavors maintained his word and never wavered from his commitment despite all the temptation to do so by so many actors functioning outside the university. The fact that he was a businessman, a parliamentarian and somebody who had an extensive network of individuals and institutions for him to consciously commit to academic freedom and autonomy and independence at a time when many other universities were struggling to maintain that 
was a truly extraordinary gesture. We owe it to Naveen Jindal for what we have accomplished all these years. I want to thoroughly thank, uh, in particular, the faculty members because of whom we have been able to create this intellectually vibrant environment. Those who are present here today, those who have not been able to join us on this occasion, those who have worked with us before, and those who have been continuously part of this journey, including the outstanding partner institutions who are present here, Indiana University, Harvard University, University of Texas, Dallas, Oxford University, and other 250 plus partnership institutions. These are the people and individuals who trusted us, who believed in us, who had, took the, who had taken the leap of faith and believed in this idea of institution building long before the world discovered. Ten years is a very short time for the history of an institution and they supported us from day one. Thank you so much, uh, the University of Arizona, Indiana, Harvard, Oxford, as well as UTD who are present here, but many more who are not present here as well. I want to thank the students. You are the reason why we are. Um, you are the reason for us to be here. You are the reason for us to believe in this idea of institution building despite numerous challenges. Every time a student comes up and talks about his or her experience, it simply makes us feel that we are doing something good out here. It simply makes us feel that there is meaning and purpose to our life so that we can transform the nature of education in this country and to inspire a generation of Indians and people from other parts of the world. So thank you students of JGU, thank you alumni of JGU to make JGU what it is. I want to thank my parents in particular, my father is present here. Uh, it is all the inspiration that I received from them all these years. They believe in the vision of honesty and integrity and rectitude and to a large extent instill those values which help me pass through this journey and the sense of humility and gracefulness and a sense of forgiveness. All of that was imbibed through my own years of living at my home and thank you so much Abba, for being here. I want to thank my wife and my children. I rarely get to see them, but nevertheless, as Dr. Sani said, they have always been there. I want to say that uh, the time when I was really conceived in university in, at NYU during 2001, I was unemployed. I didn't have any job, no salary, nothing in New York, and that's when you get the best of ideas. So students who are here remain unemployed for some time, and the best of your ideas will emerge at that time. That's when Pratibha supported me and we simply couldn't have done what we ended up doing in that vision uh, but for what she did and I'm grateful to her for not only supporting me then but all these years she has elsewhere said having been a corporate lawyer for many years I am her corporate social responsibility uh, she has said that I am a CSR and I think um, I take that very seriously um, I want to really once again thank everybody who is present here Many, many individuals to recognize. Three in particular are very special. Peter Shark, um, Stephen Marks, and Jay Krishnan. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, my mentors. Thank you, my professors, Dr. Ed Singh, Dr. Pandey, Dr. Paramanand Singh, who is not here. And of course, Professor Bupendra Bhatsi, the words that he said today are important for us to think and reflect and remember always as we work towards building this university. Thank you to all of you. May I now invite on stage our distinguished chief guest for this evening. May I now invite on the stage our distinguished chief guest for this evening, Sri H.R. Bharadwaj. May I also request his wife, Srimati Prafullata Bharadwaj, ma'am, to kindly join us on stage, please. May I request our Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. C. Rajkumar, to kindly join us on stage to felicitate our distinguished guests. Thank 
May we also request Shri Achai Bharadwaj to kindly release our 10th anniversary coffee table book. This is the Deji 10th anniversary coffee table book. Honorable Vice Chancellor Sri Raj Kumar Ji, Honorable Professors, my old friends, we have all preserved our old love and affection in our hearts, physically infirm, I may be, but up mentally and from my deepest Cave in the heart, you are all there in mind. I, I, I always... I see many changed faces, but old is gold. I saw Peter Shook. We are emotionally attached with him from the earlier day. Krishna, all these. So this family, this family, this university is a family. It is like the old days where Guru used to impart knowledge to his, to his students. So it is in tradition a very auspicious place. And when I see my friends from Harvard, Indiana, or Cambridge, or Oxford, don't feel that we don't know Oxford. I have been to Oxford many a time as a law minister, and I have listened to great scholars there. And I am a student of Max Müller. Max Müller, the German scholar, who wrote the first book on Vedas. And when I was governor of Karnataka, the German president came from Germany and presented it to me for my knowledge of Max Muller. Because it was in, 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 in Oxford, he taught Vedic philosophy. Then Dr. Radhakrishnan, of course, our first president. So professors, professors in India, they have a very big role. I was basically a lawyer, not an academician. But I assumed a role when life threw a challenge to me, divested me from the legal world, sent me to the academic world in Karnataka and Kerala. I had 30 universities to look after as chancellor. And very bright university in, in Karnataka, this Mysore University, is one of the greatest universities of ODR science. And similarly, in that area, 
where Rajkumar family comes from is Kanyakumari area. So it was a place where you see a different world, world emerging together. Three oceans joining at one place, Kanyakumari. And I know he is a respected father who is a great academician, Chokhal Indianji. So we are known to each other. So I, I, I was not in a fit state of health to come to this place. Let me tell you. This morning my physicians came, certified my health, and then they said, now you can go. You are, you are fit to go. And then he said, your health will improve. By joy when you meet people. So it is definitely. I have not sat the last 10 years, 5 years, 3 hours at one place. So I am very happy. Listen to all, uh, all speeches carefully. You have spoken from the core of your heart. And you are equally a partner in building this university. Every professor, from the day one I know, Many people who were employed from the first day one and continuing, whether it, it was in Dikaji, Kama Palace, or it is everywhere we have worked together. So I, it is a, a great place to come. It is like you visit the United Nations, where you find people from every country contributing. But this is a very very important place for me because I had for a long time as a law minister I had been yearning for a, a superlative legal education institution in India. This is the place where I was born, Haryana. And, and chief minister, the Netherlands, Rotten Fellows, they did nothing, nothing for this state. And I, I what happened? People do not know my relation with Naveen. O.P. Jindal was an industrialist from our, our area. I was his lawyer. And he, he was a very bold person. Very few like him in his life. And he, he, by hard work, he made a fortune. Then he died in a crash, in a helicopter crash. So Naveen met me in my house. I said, Naveen, your father is no more. Why can't you do something in his memory? Tata, Brilaj, they all build institutions. Why don't you do something? He said, Uncle, I'm ready. Then it was the luck that Rajkumar, in a delegation with the American professor, India International Center, we had been going around. So I said, here, here is the chance. So Naveen said, I will provide the money and infrastructure. You get me the Bar Council permission. So you know AP, AP Mishra, Supreme Court judge. He, he was my friend. I said, Justice Mishra, here is an institution which has to be sanctioned today. You are sitting with me, not tomorrow. He said, I will have to hold a meeting. I said, the extraordinary powers of the chairman. So he did exercise. He is still alive. He stayed with me in Karnataka for five years. He is with this Sai Baba University in, in, in Karnataka. A.P. Mishra and Venkata Chaliya, both are in Sai Baba University. Great judges. And he said, then you remember Professor Kidwai. He was the governor. I told Professor Kedwai, here is a challenge. This law is not forthcoming. Can't you give me an ordinance? He, he got an ordinance from me. So it all fell in line. And then he could not do it unless his activity started. Putting them together and implementing fast. We had commissioned this university within one year. Never in my life I have seen an institution of this magnitude coming up within a year. Then it is all Rajkumar. 
all the and he did not relent at that. I was the governor, he was here. So we used to stay together in that home. Many of us and work there. And all universities, Indiana, Tufts, Harvard, they were very fond of coming to Karnataka. All of them. And I have magnificent memories of those professors, the law colleges. So we had a work and we accomplished it. Now you have such a nice faculty, younger people doing so much of work with the dedication. Dedication. <coughs> that is what a success means. But this is the only institution in India about which I can say that it has set down certain basic standards in, 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 in various law, business school. I don't know about your public administration and other these intellectuals. But you have brought a change of thinking. Earlier, there was law school who taught nothing. Evening classes were held for law and students were illiterate almost. So I, I got this opportunity with you. And as governor also, I used to travel with the president's permission to, to this school whenever he called me, many a time. So this is a great institution, your university. Of course, I know Pratibhaji has sacrificed quite a lot. We are never in different colony. But she is a lawyer and she is doing her own job magnificently. She has encouraged him. But let me tell you very frankly, without your wife's support, no husband can rise. <laughs> Where is my wife? I don't know. There, there is a powerful lady who has built me from a briefless lawyer to law minister of India three times. I practice in Tisadar. A barefoot lawyer. I am a barefoot lawyer, you know. And it so happened that her hard work, sacrifice made me three times law minister of this country. And when I had to be simultaneously governor of two states. People won't believe that a man living in Bangalore, Bangalore can govern Kerala also with, with one member's majority. I had a special aircraft. I used to start early morning after breakfast to Kerala, cross the mountain and go to Trivandrum work in the secretariat and by evening I will fly back to Bangalore because this was such a kind of government I have to save that from own journey. So you have to work hard in your life. But what happened mysterious is the ways of God and life throws many challenges. My Recent illness has caused some challenges, and today I have defied that challenge. I am <laughs> it is only because of the joy which I received after seeing Krishna and Prana, all the Sukhya Old gods, after all, they are the people who were living abroad comfortably, and we requested them, they came here, in this open area land. This was the present open area land of Haryana. Nobody came here. It was, it, it was, it was an agricultural land. And they brought the university. And university, we have now 5,000 students. Oh, and professors of eminence gather. We should continue doing it. And Naminji, Deserve special congratulations.
Navin ji is very dear to me, and so is the Shalu, his wife. Of course, he is a businessman, but every businessman is not like him, donating money for a good cause. So therefore, we, have, we should thank him, and he is always he always deserves it, and his team also. By that it is administration, finance. All this one after the other, I met most of them today. Even the man who is escorting me from your vice chancellor's office, efficient, high, high quality of work is being done. So I not, need not say much. Again, thank you. Actually, all these, all these credit has to go to Rajkumar. Rajkumar ji is a focal point. And you, I, I, how glad I am that you have all turned up. Now, nowadays people forget. Oh, no, no, we are, we are not going there. We are happy. But you all are his good friends. And you are turning the table. So you are an island of hope for us. Great hope lies in this university. My own grandson has just now passed from there. A young, a young boy, Gautam, he was a student and he is now practicing with us. So we are grateful to you, my wife and me. And let me tell you, Rajkumar ji, we don't treat you as Rajkumar. We treat you as our family member. My wife will immediately catch me wherever. Oh, come, Rajkumar's phone has come. We have to, we have to go. So I said, well, she, she, she said, he is like my first son. So, I am now a retired person, absolutely sitting at home, not, not going any political activity. So I will tell you a joke before I go. Yesterday I received your this flag and all these high photographs. This is my photograph of the governor, special, special the photograph of the governor. So yesterday I received it. So I was having at in the evening with some senior lawyers of the Supreme Court. I, I showed it them, to them. This, I, this is my second launch. <laughs> so can you, what is it? I said, I am being launched by Rajkumar a second time and just like this Chandrayaan. So <laughs> 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 that I will feel happy. So my doctor said, it is a proper thing, you get lungs. Your health will improve. So thank you very much. Today's session, I would like to take this opportunity to thank each one of you for being here this evening, reflecting on your experiences of being part of the JGU story. Special thank you and deep felt gratitude to the chief guest for this evening, the former Union Minister of Law and Justice and former Governor of Karnataka, Sri H.R. Bharadwaj and Srimati Prakul Lata Bharadwaj, to have taken out the time to come to the campus and joining us in marking this momentous occasion. We are also indebted to all our institutional mentors, those present here today, but also those who couldn't join us and who send their best wishes messages. Our partners from the various international universities present today, your confidence and continued support, 
motivates us to do better. But most of all, big gratitude is due to each one of you who has, through their commitment to work, institution building, and leadership, contributed to the achievements we celebrate today. And since in our context, no celebration is complete without sharing sweets, I would like to invite representatives from the JGU Student Council one more time to come onto the stage and cut this special cake.